Hi guys, it's Danny. Alrighty, today we're gonna discuss a little bit more about Ceramis. And this is because many of my viewers told me they managed to find Ceramis in their area, but they have a little bit of an issue with what they find. So, first of all, I didn't purchase my Ceramis at Ceramis. I am not completely sure this is Ceramis. They did invent this product, but I'm not sure if this is a different manufacturer because I received this uh, media from Orchid Top. And this is what they sell, and you can see the size of these granules. So my viewers were complaining that they received from Ceramis uh, smaller graded granules. Now those are not bad, but if you are looking for the big grade one, I'll share with you the Orchid Top link down below. You can actually purchase them if you are from Europe. Transport might be a little steep, but anyway, this is the only place where I found this particular uh, Ceramis. Let's just call it like that. I did email Ralph and I'll let you know if this is indeed Ceramis or it's a different manufacturer, so hopefully you will have some answers. Now Ceramis as a brand is only available in Europe. I'm not sure about USA, about the clay granules, but I think I found a very very similar product in the USA and it's called Grow Stones. So you have a link in the description to this product and you can check it out. I really really think it's absolutely similar if not identical. So whatever I will say about Ceramis might apply for that product as well. So if you're in the USA just check out the link below and maybe you can easily find this product in your stores or in your garden centers or even on Amazon, why not? So that's the first thing that I want to address. Now with the small grade Ceramis, one of my viewers was concerned that it might actually suffocate roots. It will not suffocate roots. In order to properly suffocate the roots of an orchid, you need very, very fine stuff like soil and actually sphagnum moss, which can compress. It's a very flimsy material. This is the way you can actually suffocate roots. With small grade ceramics, you cannot suffocate roots because it's still holding its shape. It's not compacting and it's not very fine. But you need to be careful with how to water. And we'll touch base on watering and dealing with ceramics because as great as I find it, you really might not find it that great if you don't know how to use it. Now, second of all, not all people actually need ceramics. Just because I find it really, really good does not mean you will find it really good in your environment. Think of ceramics as the inorganic equivalent of sphagnum moss. If sphagnum moss does not work for you, this might not work for you either. Although it might, but think of it as moss, a very, very water retentive media, which is inorganic, yes, and keeps its shape so it's not suffocating roots, but it holds tremendous amounts of water. And I did a little experiment for you guys. I weighted a jar of ceramics, dry ceramics, and I'll show you the footage. As you can see, it has 62 grams. And then I let water run through the ceramics for about 10 seconds, not more, because this stuff is really absorbent, and I actually weighted it again. And look and behold how much water this stuff can hold. It's practically double its weight. So 62 grams of ceramics can actually hold 62 grams of water. So anyway, this is just to give you an idea of how much water this stuff can actually hold in because it is very, very porous. It is super light when it's dry, but it gets very heavy when it's wet. Now, keeping this in mind, this can work in your advantage or in your disadvantage. If you have that type of environment, which is humid, kind of cold, you don't hassle with watering very often because your environment is not dry, doesn't make water evaporate too fast. Ceramics might not be for you, or you might not need it. You might actually do better with bark or leka or other materials. So don't think this is the holy grail and you absolutely need it. No, you don't. But if you live in that type of climate, which is dry, like my spring, summer and autumn, this can actually become really, really useful because of its water retention. Now, getting back to my experiment, another cool feature about the ceramics is that it is very absorbent. You do not need to wet everything to get everything wet. So if you have a pot and you put water in its tray and the pot has holes, the ceramics will wick up that water until the top. If it's a taller pot, it will take a little bit longer, but rest assured, it will suck water all the way to the top. That's another cool feature of the ceramics, very similar to moss. That's why I said, think of it as the inorganic sphagnum moss in the orchid hobby. This will make things easier. Now, because it absorbs 
all that water and distributes it evenly or as close to evenly as possible, you can actually play with the quantity of water you use with your ceramics. Unlike bark and other materials, you don't need to soak the stuff necessarily. You don't need to wet all the surface. You don't need to use large quantities of water to properly water a pot of ceramics. All you need to do is either place water at the bottom and let the ceramics wick, or you can place it on the top and let gravity kind of distribute it throughout the length of the pot. What this means is that you can actually control the amount of water in your orchid pot. So as I showed you, the ceramics can hold double its weight in water. But if you don't add that much water, it will not hold double its amount. I don't know if you're getting what I'm saying. So you can actually play around with a small quantity of water. If you're in that season, which is not super, super, super dry, you can actually place just a little bit of water on the ceramics and that will make things a lot better. Water will evaporate faster because it's not a large quantity of it. So if it's winter in your climate, like in my climate right now, you can get away with this water retentive media just by adding a tiny little bit of water. Of course, this will need experimenting and you need to kind of see how much water to actually add instead of actually soaking or just running a lot of water through this media. This is actually economical and I do remember last year there was a drought particularly in the USA and people really needed to cut back on the usage of water. I can totally understand that. So this might help you out with that matter if you don't want to use sphagnum moss, let's say. Sphagnum moss has the same property, but yeah, it degrades way too fast. So that is one thing to consider with ceramics. So even though in the summertime it's really, really hot and dry and you need to put a lot of water into the ceramics, in the wintertime it might not be needed and you can actually get away with just a little bit of water that will eventually take the entire pot and distribute itself evenly. Now, not all orchids need a lot of water. Miltoniopsis, Oncidiums, and some other orchids do need to be constantly moist. They enjoy a lot of water, but what do we do with Calia orchids? Because they might just not need that much water. They might stay too moist if we soak up the ceramics. Well, I came up with a thing. I mixed some Leca beads, which for me are not that water absorbent, but you can obviously do the test, just like I did with the ceramics. Wait um, the dry leka and then wet it, soak it, and see how much water it holds. Anyway, so I mixed it, and what happens is I get a much even, much more even drying out, no more layering, and also much more aeration, because leka is a little bigger than ceramics, as you can see. Now, the drawback with this is that if you leave water on the tray, it will not necessarily go all the way to the top depends how much leka you actually add. So again, you kind of need to play around with that. But if you water from the top and let gravity do its thing, it's going to be a lot better. So I intend to actually try this for those orchids who don't necessarily need quite that much water, like Cattleyas. So if you're using a plastic pot, this can work better. In a clay pot, which is already super ventilated, I'm not really sure. It needs some testing, which I'll perform in a few months. But you can obviously do a mixture of bigger leka beads and ceramics. Now about the non-degrading thing. Yes, it does not degrade, which is absolutely fantastic because you will not end up in one year and a half or two years with a bunch of molds everywhere. Unless roots die, but usually if you don't disturb them, even calia orchids, which kind of kill off their roots, if you don't disturb them too often, they really don't kill their roots all that fast. So maybe this can actually hold you for about five years until you actually need to repot and cut away any dead roots if you have any. Now there will be some concern with fertilizer. I'm not sure if these pores will get clogged up by minerals from the fertilizer. So for this reason, let's say once a month, it is a good idea to actually flush this pot with water. And actually Brad from Brad's Greenhouse has a video in which he shows you how much salt a pot can hold if you don't flush it. I'll add a link somewhere on the screen so you can watch that video. I find it really interesting. I never did the test. I wanted to, but I don't have a TDS meter. I'll buy one. Anyway, so once a month, I will intend to flush out the pots as well. But for the rest of the time, just imagine how little work it will be to actually water these orchids. It will be just like a normal houseplant. 
once you get the hang of things and how much water you actually need, you can put water in the tray or a little bit on top and you'll actually save tremendous amounts of water and tremendous amounts of time on watering rather than picking up the orchid, going to the sink or soaking it, putting it back, letting it drain and all of that. So it's a water saver and it's a time saver at the same time if used properly and if it is good for your environment. So for this reason, I find it again spectacular if this is something that would work in your environment. I keep saying environment, look what happens in my winter time. I do get some mold, even on ceramics. It's bound to happen. You get molds on everything, sphagnum moss, bark, whatever, if your environment is not properly ventilated and it's kind of humid. I've discovered that in my environment, if it's not fresh air, it will be prone to having this. Of course, this problem only happens three months a year in this environment. In my new environment, it will probably never happen. <laughs> but yeah, this can happen to ceramics as well. And if you don't have the possibility to open up the windows in winter time and refresh the air all the time, it can happen. So this is why I'm saying it might not be for you. And of course, if you don't use it properly, if you soak it up when you don't need to soak it up, you will get this. So yeah, be careful with that. But anyway, these are the thoughts on ceramics that I have. And in my opinion, it's going to be really, really a nice balance between water, air, saving time, saving water. In the end, making life easier with orchids is really all that matters to me because I want to enjoy the hobby. And sometimes watering way too often and remembering, wait, I need to water today. It will take me three hours. I will not make the wedding. So <laughs> yeah, stuff like that. Kind of makes the hobby a little bit of a drag sometimes. I don't want to hassle with that. So I'm gonna experiment more with ceramics. I'm telling you today that when I get there, I'll order about 50 or 100 bags of ceramics. I'll use clay pots mostly with this because I want that ventilation and all of that. So we'll talk more about clay pots and ceramics then because I kind of need to experiment it with that a little bit more. But here are some thoughts on ceramics. Hope these were helpful. So before you hop on the wagon and buy five bags of ceramics, think about all of these things. Think if you actually need it or if you don't have too many orchids, if you're okay with repotting regularly, that's perfectly fine. There isn't such a thing as the perfect media out there. It's just particular media is being perfect for particular people and environments. But hopefully this shed a bit of light. And anyway, about the granules, I'll let you know. I'm not sure why Ceramis has smaller granules than what Orchitop offers, but if you're interested in that, just visit the description below. Um, this costs 3.5 euros per 5 liters, if I'm not mistaken. So it's not a tremendous amount of money. Transport will be a little bit steep because that's how transport is. So think better if you actually need it. If you can't afford it, try it with a bag and try it for yourself. But hopefully this was helpful. So alrighty guys, thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I cannot wait to fully go into this media and repot all of my orchids in this. So if you'd like to stay up to date with that experiment and with everything, simply subscribe to my channel. I post on a regular basis and I will continue to post on a regular basis even when I move. Feel free to leave me questions or suggestions in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. If you click on the left side of your screen, you'll be directed to workinature.com where you'll find care sheets, identification sheets and also you can talk to us in the forum section. And on the right side of your screen, you can click to watch another orchid video. Thank you for joining, I'll see you next time, bye!